Hello friends, welcome back to Good Life Farm. So today is going to be a little bit of an update on everything. So right now I am in the kitchen putting away my freezer containers that I washed um, from the freezer. I, I told you guys that we had one of our freezers um, basically go belly up on us. So everything was thawing and freezing and thawing and freezing. So. Um, the items that were in there, I was waiting for an opportunity to dump them so that I could save all my freezer containers. I didn't want to lose these because, you know, these are an investment. I mean, they're not terribly expensive, but, you know, you take care of these things. You can use them for years and years. Um, and so, even though the food was no good, I didn't want to lose the containers and there is a fly in here um, we've actually had a really mild summer for flies usually because of you know living in the country and having animals out there we deal with them really bad really struggle with them and we were in the spring earlier well earlier in the summer like we usually are but because it's been so dry, I think that's kind of been a little bit of a reprieve for us. Um, but we got some rain, so here comes the flies. One of the things that I wanted to update all of you on is my daughter. Uh, lots of people have been asking how she's doing. And some good, some bad. She's back to work, which she's so very happy about. Um, she's able to walk believe it or not. Um, she does have a cane for stability so that if she needs it she's got it. However she went to the doctor recently for an update or a, a checkup to see how everything was coming along and in her leg she has zero bone growth. Um, I don't remember how much bone growth she said was in her arm. I don't think it was as much as they would have liked, but I know in her leg there was nothing. And the doctor said that that was extremely unusual, uh, and it shouldn't be that way after two months with a broken leg. Um, but they went ahead to, and did some lab work to try and figure out what was causing it, and it turned out she was very depleted in vitamin D which is something that I recently found out that I was, um, which is odd considering how much time I spend outside and considering the fact that I have permanent tan lines. I mean, I look like I always have Birkenstocks on my feet because I wear Birkenstocks so much um, that I have the tan lines from them. And yet my body does not hang on to vitamin D. And you know, that made me think about it for a little bit. That kind of explains why when I got the original bug that's been going around the last couple of years, why I was so incredibly sick. Very sick. Like, way sicker than anybody in 
the family. Um, because I was taking all the supplements, and yet I was deathly ill. Um, but now that I know that my body doesn't hang on to vitamin D like it's supposed to, that explains a lot. So when my daughter went in to have that checkup and it came back that there was zero bone growth, I got to thinking there, well, I wonder if because I'm vitamin D deficient that my body doesn't hang on to it, I wonder if that's a trait that she has too since she is my daughter. And it, sure enough, it came back that she was indeed vitamin D deficient. So um, it probably doesn't help that she works nights. Um, she's a 911 operator. So she doesn't see a whole lot of daylight, um, but she is taking supplements. Um, so hopefully when she goes in for her next checkup, the scans will show improvement. You know, she is able to, you know, walk, like I said. Um, she does deal with a lot of things that um, Heather over at the Needy Homesteader has been dealing with. Um, repeated swelling, um, inflammation, pain, um, things like that. But she is able to walk, she is able to function, and she was able to go to work, which for her was huge. That was a big, big goal, and so she's happy to be able to do that. Um, that leads me into a little bit of an update about me. Um, as you all know, and that fly is going to drive me crazy. Uh, as you know, I had a surgery that was scheduled um, back in, gosh, what is this? This is July, so I guess it was in June. I was supposed to have a surgery um, to remove some very large kidney stones that had been living in my kidney for years and causing me lots of pain. Um, that had to get nixed, and I I shared that there was a reason behind it, but I didn't share what it was. Um, I have had issues that I've dealt with for many years, including the kidney stones. You know, I've got the spurs that I've discovered that I have on my spine. When I started going to the chiropractor, we saw that. Um, I have joint pain. Um, it's just... Pain is something I've dealt with for a long time. Most of the time I just push through, life goes on, and I have to too. Um, but some days are, are bad, and you know, it just is what it is. So the reason my surgery was halted was because my blood pressure was extremely high, uh, dangerously so. Um, one of the things about me is my body is very resistant to a lot of things and I have adverse reactions to things that seem very benign like sunscreen or I, I can't even think of anything else off the top of my head uh, adhesive uh, adhesive like for bandages and stuff for me is like a chemical burn it's horrible I, I can't there's very few bandages that I can wear but my body's also very resistant to things. It's very resistant to anesthesia. It's very resi resistant to any kind of painkiller. Um, uh, and it's also very resistant to blood pressure medications. And I have been on many of them. Um, and not just, you know, typical pharmaceutical types of medications. Um, when I first started dealing with the high blood pressure, the very first thing I did was I started taking an herb that my father-in-law used to take that worked so well, he could only take a quarter of a dose every day because it would drop his blood pressure too much. Um, that was the first thing I tried. Didn't do a thing. Um, no herb that I tried did anything. I did start making a tincture, a very formulated tincture. Um, I mean, I've got all of these herbs that go into it and it did work for a little while and then my body just kind of, I don't know, adapted to it and that was out the window. And so everything that you could think of to control blood pressure that you would do, I've done. 
I lost 50 pounds a couple years ago. No effect. Um, uh, it's just, you know, getting plenty of sleep and all of those things. I mean, I'm, I'm very, I try to be very diligent about getting a full night's sleep. You know, sometimes I fail at it. Um, all the things. And ultimately I ended up doing what I didn't ever want to do, but I had to start taking a prescription. Because when it comes to blood pressure, that's not something that you should really be playing around with. Um, especially since there is a history of bad things happening in my family. Um, and so I did end up going the prescription route and just like with the herbs and everything else, nothing was working. Um, but we have finally found something that is just recently. Um, however, when I went to the hospital to have the surgery, the anesthesiologist was like, um, he looked at the list of all the different medications that I had taken um, because I've been keeping a running tally on a, on a note on my phone. And he said, and none of these worked? And I said, no. And he suggested that my doctor start looking for an underlying cause. Often there's something going on in the body that has a secondary cause of high blood pressure. And so I started looking up things that would have high blood pressure as a result. And one of the things that really jumped out at me was something called hyperparathyroidism. And when you go down the list of all of the symptoms or all of the major symptoms for hyperparathyroidism, and oddly enough, several of my viewers mention the exact same thing. Um, it sounds like a checklist for me. Everything I've ever ever dealt with. Uh, joint pain, calcium going places in the body where it's not supposed to, like bone spurs and kidney stones and um, fatigue and just, I mean, all these things. Well, I went into the doctor and mentioned it and she looked through my paperwork and said okay this is not something that we would have caught because we have not tested for these things she she said well, let's do it so I immediately went over they drew blood they tested and I went back and I was really it's kind of a mixed bag you while on one side you don't want there to be something wrong with your thyroid you also want to have an answer and I went in and my labs came back normal. So that was out the window. And to be honest, at the time I was on a medication that was making me really, it felt like my body was shutting down. And I don't know if you guys noticed there for a couple of weeks, well actually it was probably closer to a month where my videos were really really low energy. I mean, I'm kind of a chill person, but they were probably lower energy than usual. Um, I, I felt like my body was shutting down this medication. Um, I, I truly felt like it was killing me, which is one of the reasons I don't like medications. Um, and so after a month, uh, well, let me just put it this way. I was only getting about two to three hours of sleep a night for a month um, and my body wasn't functioning. Um, I went in and I told her, I said, if you don't take me off of this medication today, I'm taking myself off of it. And uh, she's like, okay. And so we tried something else and what we are doing now, the protocol we have now is working. Um, of course, I'm taking a very high dosage vitamin D supplement, um, but then I also have two other medications because one alone is not enough. I'm on two other medications to get my blood pressure under control and it is working. Um, I, am, I have been on it for a good bit now and my blood pressure is good. And she's like, okay, I want you to stay on this for three months. After three months, we will reassess, and if all is still good, we're going to reschedule the surgery. 
And I know that might see like, seem like a while to be delaying a surgery, but honestly, I've had these kidney stones for about eight years. So a few months is not going to um, hurt anything. And when I say eight years, I mean these kidney stones specifically, these very large um, boulders <laughs> in my kidney. Kidney stones in general are something that I have dealt with since about 06. So it's just part of my life. Um, so yes, we'll reassess and if all is well, we will go ahead and reschedule the surgery at that time. Um, and I also have another surgery that is something else that I've been putting off, um, which I will be addressing here pretty soon as well. Um, I mean, it's, it's just something that I've been needing to get done. I have a history of oral problems and so it's something else I've dealt with my whole life and so this is a surgery that I'm going to have to have done and um, it'll be good. It'll be good in the end. So, um, what else? Oh, mugs. So now this one in particular is one that I just had made for myself. It's a green jade speckly one and it's kind of a matte glaze. Uh, this is not one that I made available for order. It's kind of like my own special mug. Um, but the big pre-order that we did for the pottery coffee mugs, um, I wanted to give you all an update because I just got an update from the artist. Uh, when I originally was accepting pre-orders for these pottery mugs, and remember these are handmade pottery mugs. These are not commercial mugs that are just made by a machine. There is a lady who is physically making all of these mugs with her two hands. Um, you know, they have to dry, they have to be fired more than once, and you know, all the whole nine yards. Um, originally, when we were talking about doing a big pre-order like that, um, she said, okay, well right now I'm accepting the, the orders that I'm taking are projected to be done sometime in July. Now that was before the week or so that I accepted orders. And let me tell you, I there were a lot more orders than I thought there would be and more than she expected there were going to be. So it's a really big order. Um, and of course, it was, it's going to take a little bit longer to make them all. Um, but I just got an update from her yesterday. Oh, and little Miss Willow is waking up, so just a second. Alrighty. So, what was I saying? Mugs. Um, so I got a message from her just yesterday, and she let me know that right now it looks like the coffee mugs will be done around August 8th to 10th somewhere in there and when they are finished I am actually physically driving to Chattanooga myself to get them that way I don't have to pay shipping twice um, because you know I'm I've got to get them all from her and it would cost a fortune to ship them all here um, this is a really really big order um, almost 10 times the size of my original order that I did and I will tell you guys, um, when I shipped out all of those first mugs that people purchased, it took me an entire day to box those up and package them for the post office. So knowing that, um, please show me a little bit of grace when I get all of these mugs in because um, it's just me and I've got to box up a lot of mugs uh, and like I said almost 10 times the size of the last order so please be patient with me <laughs> as I as I um, box them up and get them in the mail um, I will send out the um, tracking code so if you purchased a mug as soon as your mug ships, the tracking code will go live. And depending upon when these mugs get done, I'm kind of hoping that, that they'll be done a little bit early 
because I'm actually going to be out of town. I'm going on a trip to Texas. Um, I will be going to Texas to a conference and I'm going to be gone for several days. And so I'm hoping that the mugs actually get done a little bit sooner. They got done sooner last time. I'm my fingers are crossed that that happens again. That way I can at least get some of the mugs shipped before I go on my trip. Um, otherwise, they're going to have to wait until I get back. And I, I hate to keep you guys waiting any longer than, you know, I absolutely have to. But, um, <laughs> what do I need? But, uh, yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to share an update on the mugs. What? 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 Did you have a good nap? <laughs> Hi, baby girl. Hmm. So, Little Miss Willow officially has a nickname. Um, I was playing with her one day and talking to her, and it just, <laughs> oh, yes, and it just kind of came out that I was going to call her Willow Bean. And we've been calling her... Alright, my battery died there. Um, but, as I was saying, uh, so we started calling her Willow Bean. Willow Bean. Willow Bean! Willow Bean! And so her nickname has become Bean. Huh, Bean? Because she's cute as a little butter bean. Cute as a little butter bean. So that's her nickname. It's Bean. And I'm actually thinking about making a little t-shirt for her with little beans on it. Huh, Bean? Um, but little Bean here is finally to the stage where I can lay down a blanket. And she will play with her toys. And kind of entertain herself for a little bit here or there. And then Oma can get some stuff done, huh? And she thinks the dogs are absolutely entertaining. She loves the dogs, especially Shotzi. Although he's terrified of her. Huh, me? Yeah. But in any case, I just wanted to share an update on everything with all of you. It's been a little bit since I've, did, since I've done just kind of a, a coffee chat. <laughs> huh yeah so next week there will be a new peach recipe going up um, I have another peach preserve this one is a butter a peach butter kind of recipe and of course it's a high high acid canning recipe so it would be a hot water bath canner or a steam canner whichever one you prefer for high acid foods and uh, yeah so you can look forward to that huh does that sound good you can't have those yet no at least not what <laughs> what huh you gonna talk to everybody you wanna say hi friends say hi friends <laughs> Alrighty, well with that, I'm going to let y'all go. Thanks for hanging out in the kitchen with us, with Bean and me. We'll talk to y'all next time. Huh, baby girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah.